Welcome to Riley's Gardening Adventures. Three weeks ago, I set out on an experiment to discover the effects of mycorrhizal fungi in the creation of growing tomato transplants for the 2023 summer season. I had four categories that I was going to test to find out which one performed the best. And these are my findings. All right, so let's look at the data. Mycoswid fertilizer proved to have the thickest stem out of all of the categories with fertilizer close behind with 2.3 centimeters as opposed to 2.6 centimeters. Control and Mycos did the worst with 1.25 centimeters for Mycos and one centimeter for Control. So now let's look at the plant height. For plant height, I measured it in inches and for the first two weeks, there was a negligible difference between all four categories until the third week of transplanting, in which Mycos wood fertilizer skyrocketed above the rest with 5.5 inches of growth compared to the second place fertilizer with 4 5.5 inches of growth and Mycos with only 4 inches of growth. Control did the worst with 3.75 inches and with a difference of 4 inches of growth in total for Mycos wood fertilizer, 3.25 inches with fertilizer, 2.5 inches of growth with Mycos, and 2.25 inches with control. And this is the data. So let's go look at the plants. Now what you've been all been waiting for, the plants themselves. And I will be going up close and personal with each of these plants and then showing you the root balls at the end. So you can see for yourself the evidence I have gathered. So the first that we're gonna cover is the control, which is the worst performer out of all of them. As you can see in the data, this flag behind. And now you can see for yourself visually that this is the smallest plant and the one with the most yellowish leaves. So as you can see, very, very small and yellow. Now the next is Mycos alone. So this is just Mycos um, added to the soil, same type of soil as this, so there was nothing in it. And despite the Mycos adding a stronger root network, um, it wasn't enough and the plant just started to suffer and also just like the control have yellowing of the leaves. I will like to say that this is more yellow well, this is not, despite them being the same soil, which I believe is that the mycos with the stronger root network was able to find any bits of trace of leftover nutrients in the soil that the control cannot. But nevertheless, if there's nothing in the soil, it doesn't matter if it has a stronger root network. So mycos performed second worst. So fertilizer alone. This is the one that I've been using with Osmocote, the 141414 fertilizer. And fertilizer alone did pretty well. I'm actually pretty impressed of how well this category grew. Um, this looks just like the plants I bought in uh, Menards. And this is just a nice quality tomato plant. Um, as you can see, the stem is thicker, much thicker than the Mycos alone and the control. There is no yellowing. The leaves are much, much bigger. Look at that. This leaf is already bigger than the entire plant. And it grew pretty tall. It's much taller than both of them. So fertilizer alone did really well. Um, I would say that fertilizing your tomato seedlings is a must and this is just fertilizer category. So the last category, which was our best performer is Mycos wood fertilizer. Now look at the size of this seedling. It is humongous and it's even bigger than the pot itself. Side by side comparison. Just look, look at that. Wow, much bigger, much bigger leaves, stronger stem, just basically better than the fertilizer category, even though the fertilizer category did per exceptionally well compared to the other two. And Mycos with fertilizer has proven that it is the best combo out of all the other categories and that Mycos with fertilizer is what you want to do when making uh, transplants for your garden. As promised, we will now look at the root balls of each of these plants. So first, let's look at the control, which did the worst. As you can see, some root growth all around the plant. Um, looks pretty healthy root system, actually. It's not root bound, but as you can see, even with the pretty good roots, it just didn't have any nutrients to absorb, and so it didn't perform well. Uh, the next root ball we're looking at is the mycos alone. So this already has a much larger increase of roots than the control did. Despite the nutrient network of the roots, um, it just didn't do that well because there was nothing for it to absorb, but as already evidence of the mycos being at work and giving a better root system. The next plant is the fertilizer alone, 
was you can already see the um, osmocote in there and it has the much thicker roots than even the mycosloan and I believe this is because that the fertilizer has given it more nutrients to grow bigger roots even without the inoculant of the mycos but even so it did better root system than both of these and it's did pretty good but what it can't beat is the root system of mycos with fertilizer the best performer and just look how dense these roots are now I'm not saying that this is bad but this is just more dense you can already see the density of these roots are better than that one and it's obvious that it just resulted in the better plant overall and this has the best root network and I would actually like to put mycos and fertilizer for each of my tomato plants for the upcoming season. In conclusion, mycos with fertilizer has proven to be the best category for growing tomato transplants for your garden. But there is some caveats I would like to cover. Is number one, you have to be careful with watering. This plant drinks the most amount of water and you will have to water it more often than you would with any other category. Number two is that this plant grows really fast. So if you have a lot of plants that you're seed starting indoors and you have mycos on them, you have to make sure that you have enough pot size to grow them before you transplant them out there. Because I believe that if this got a little bit taller, this pot would not be the right size for the size of plant. And then last is the cost. So this thing is not cheap. It's not cheap to get this stuff. So you have to be willing to stomach the price of this product. And you have to see if you really value the difference between fertilizer alone and mycos alone. Now for me, I think it is worth the few dollars. I'm not sponsored by the way, but I think it's worth the few extra dollars to pay to get this type of performance versus fertilizer alone. Because say if it's already, this is already ahead of the fertilizer alone now as a seedling, just imagine when it's mature and giving out fruits and you'll have a lot more performance with the mycos. So stay tuned for more adventures on Riley's Gardening Adventures. First and foremost, I recently bought an Aero Garden Slim. And what I plan to do is do an unboxing video and then a one month review where I will share my thoughts and I will believe if it's worth it or not. And second, I would like to share the new seeds that I bought at my local Korean store. Two new Napa cabbage varieties to add into the spring seed lineup. Uh, the first variety is Kimchi Cabbage Chun Yong Gold F1. And the next one is Chun Dong 102, which both of these are hybrid Napa cabbage varieties. And I just want to share that these are added to the spring seed lineup.